Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, my name is Plummy and in this episode of Plummy's Thoughts On I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on the 7th episode of the 6th season of Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, the episode is titled Damage from the Inside and hearing that name I expected uh, this episode to be more about causing a damage from the inside, you know? And you would expect that something like this would be the actual mid-season finale and not the uh, one that is forced to be the mid-season finale because, uh, as you know, because of COVID, they couldn't uh, continue shooting Fear the Walking Dead similarly to how they couldn't finish uh, uh, the finale for season 10 or the what used to be the finale of season 10. So uh, they ended up having the mid-season finale be this episode, episode 7. But even then with this title it makes sense for it to be the mid-season finale. But considering the content of the episode, it sucked as a mid-season finale. I would say it, uh, honestly. I mean, depends. it also depends on what you exactly expect a mid-season finale to do, because uh, uh, does it need to be big stuff, a cliffhanger or anything like that? Because in a certain way, I mean, I'm satisfied. I'm definitely more satisfied with what uh, happened in this forced uh, finale than what happened in episode 15 of the 10th season of The Walking Dead. But still, I would have preferred to have the actual episode 8, especially considering what the quality of this 7th uh, episode ended up being. And yeah, it wasn't really good. But before we get into the review of this episode, I just want to quickly mention that if you want to support the channel and uh, help me to continue making these kinds of videos, uh, make sure to go uh, to the links in the description and go to Patreon and pledge your support with any amount of money you want. There are a few tires, but it's nothing really special. I don't really think it's okay to offer, um, uh, how to say, Patreon specific content. Like, I don't like that. I prefer everything for me to be on YouTube. And if uh, people want to support me, they are free to do so. But I also don't want to force people to do it. So if you don't want to, that's completely fine, but it would be greatly appreciated if you do so because it would allow me to do this full time and forever, basically, and do it for the rest of my life, which is what I want. But yeah, again, if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine, that's completely acceptable, it's your money after all. Uh, and additionally, I also want to mention that I've finally released a new chapter in my, uh, in my zombie story that I've written. Because uh, if you didn't know, in addition to doing all the videos on the on this YouTube channel, I also have a Wattpad where I post my stories. Uh, I have many ideas for many different stories, but so far I've only started writing uh, one story. It's called Dead Inside and it's a zombie story. And a few days ago I posted uh, the new chapter, I believe it's chapter 5, it's called Lockdown. And that's only as much as I'm gonna tell you because I don't want to spoil what happens in it. But yeah, check it out. It's not the best thing ever, like, I, I don't think my writing is good or whatever, but I would appreciate if you check it out, you know. But yeah, uh, going back to my review of this episode. Yeah, I was really disappointed after watching this episode. It was, it was just bad. I mean... Not all of the episodes is bad, don't get me wrong, there's a lot that I actually enjoy, but basically what this episode was about was a complete waste of time. I enjoyed uh, uh, World Beyond's episodes much more. All the episodes surrounding this uh, seventh episode were so much better. But yeah, uh, let's go into the usual way I review this episode, basically recapping it and saying things I feel uh, at certain scenes. So it started off actually pretty good with uh, Strand and uh, Dakota. I think the dialogue between them was actually pretty cool. Strand kind of playing uh, her and kind of the audience like playing it off uh, as though he's not going to do anything, like he's not gonna destroy Virginia's community from the inside. Uh, even though Dakota was there when they kind of had created the plan, you know? But I guess this is kind of his role in this season, he's playing, he may be playing both sides. 
Uh, we'll see how that's gonna go, but it was interesting because she knows that he's trying to destroy Virginia's communities, or at least she thinks that's what he's planning, and maybe that's what he's planning, maybe it's not. It's not clear. He uh, Strand is this kind of a con man, so it's possible that he's playing both sides, you know. We'll see how that's gonna go. So it's actually a pretty interesting opening scene. Um, then, uh, as Strand is taking Dakota to a safe house because uh, uh, of the attack on Tank Town, I think that's what they called it in the previous episode, uh, the escort that is taking them there, like uh, 20 people with horses, uh, one person who ended up going uh, forward to scout ahead and see if there's any trouble or, or anything like that, uh, his horse ends up coming back to the rest of the group. And I gotta say, all the scenes here with like the horses without their riders were so fucking cool. Like it's so menacing to see them without the riders. Especially the following scene in which Strand and uh, one of the riders uh, female riders end up scout going ahead to scout and see what happened to that person uh, as they turn back because they find a cut tree on the road as they uh, turn back they see all the horses that were surrounding the car which was being escorted running towards them without the riders and I really loved that shot there with the horses because it's so menacing to see them. I don't know what's exactly uh, so cool about it, but it just feels cool to see all these horses with other riders. It's just menacing and I love that. And then as Strand and that other rider are running towards the back towards the car, uh, I really love the camera shot. Like this is like there has been a lot of really cool camera work. Uh, this shot reminded me of a shot from the second episode, which was directed by Lenny James, but this is not directed by Lenny James, so it's not him uh, uh, thinking of that shot, but it's a really cool sweeping shot where the camera moves right behind them and with them. It's a really cool shot, I really like it. Um, then we actually finally meet the actual main character of this episode, you know, and by the way, uh, the intro sequence, I actually really liked it. Um, the music for it, like I've noticed in some of the episode, uh, the intro song is actually a little bit more different than the other ones. And in this one, I feel like they maybe were trying to emulate uh, the kind of intro that Fear the Walking Dead used to have because it was much more of a darker and menacing sound that they used and I really like that. Uh, it definitely worked at least for the episode concept but the execution of it was pretty bad and it's kind of what I predicted and uh, by the way uh, remember a few videos ago in which I reviewed one of the episodes I think it was episode 3 and I um, speculated that in the future we might see a character uh, who is an antagonist who was the one who had bombed the walkers in episode 3. Um, I guess we kind of got that but they're also kind of doing it in the second half of the season or in episode 8 I'm not sure so that's weird but also just want to point out that in that video I said that the person that was tied up on the table was June, so I was expecting that that was going to happen in June's episode, but no, it was actually Alicia. Somehow I couldn't tell them the two of them apart, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we finally meet Alicia in this episode. She is with Charlie at some random fucking scouting outpost or whatever, looking for walkers or something. I, I'm not really sure what they were doing there and what Virginia was thinking they were doing there, but whatever. I kind of like the vibe I got from the place they were staying at. I don't know why, it just feels so cool to be in a house uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, with random walkers going around. It's just the aesthetic of it or the vibe of it is really cool and I really like it. That is definitely something I would do if I was in the zombie apocalypse. It might be something that I might explore in my zombie story dead inside that I mentioned earlier, but we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. 
So uh, Strand is actually uh, trying to con uh, contact Alicia to help him out finding Dakota because when he and the rider were running back to the car, Dakota actually wasn't there. And at first they thought that she was kidnapped, but then they uh, said that. Uh, then later they find the car, so she is she definitely escaped. She wasn't uh, uh, kidnapped or whatever. But yeah, Strand is trying to connect Alicia. And she refuses uh, to uh, to answer, I guess, because she's pissed that he basically pushed her away. Which is not something that I had the impression that was going to happen. Like from the uh, from the end of the scene in the second episode where Strand sent her away, I didn't really get the impression that she was offended about it. I don't know. It's just it came a little bit out of nowhere for me, you know. I get that she was confused why she was uh, he was sending her away, but I didn't really get the impression she was offended. But still, uh, she finally contacts him and she agrees to help him. And I gotta say, I really love in those scenes when, when they meet and he explains to Alicia what has happened and everything. And I just love how she gloats about it. Uh, she literally says to him with a smile on her face, you're screwed. And it's just so fucking funny. I really enjoyed like these first 15 minutes of the episode. It was fun. Um, and he sends them uh, basically Alicia and Charlie to go and find, find Dakota. Why did Strand think that Alicia was going to be luckier at finding Dakota more than him? I don't know, but okay. A justification to feature him in the, in, in the episode. Fine by me. But this is honestly where the episode starts going downhill, uh, because from this point onwards, I just was so bored. Like, there was even something off that I felt when I was watching the trailer for this episode, because basically the, from this part onwards, is a lot of the shots we've seen from the trailer, like, or the opening minutes as well, or the sneak peek, should I say. Uh, where Alicia finds a weird walker who seems to have been patched up with random stuff. And even in the sneak peek when I watched it, it just felt off and dull in a way, you know? And just from, from this point onwards, the rest of the episode was so hard to pay attention to. Like, you know how I've mentioned in some of my World Beyond reviews, especially early on this, in the season, how I couldn't force myself, sometimes I couldn't force myself to keep paying attention to the episode, and I would just end up browsing Reddit on my other monitor or whatever? This happened in this episode as well but it's the worst it's ever been like i tried to pay attention i tried but i was so bored i was bored to death and there was this fucking character who was so bland and uninteresting and he got like fucking four monologues spouting about his family and why he does what he does and other shit that doesn't fucking matter i was Bored. And this honestly ruined the episode for me. It it's it has gone so far as to even make it make me question the quality of the rest of the season. That's how bad it was. Because this is how I felt during like season five. Because for season five I watched like the first two and a half episodes maybe, and I was bored and annoyed and it just was doing stupid stuff so I couldn't keep watching it and that's the kind of feeling that it, I was reminded of in this episode so it really pissed me off but to continue recapping it basically uh, Charlie and Alicia find this walker uh, near a I don't know cabin in the woods let's call it uh, Alicia stupidly goes inside to investigate and finds a guy uh, operating walkers in his basement. Obviously she gets captured, put on a table, uh, then she quickly escapes. That was kind of interesting to see. Like there was some tension at that point there, but then once she escapes, uh, Dakota shows up out of nowhere. So that killed the tension a little bit. And then this Super fucking normal guy shows up apologizing to Alicia for doing what he did to her. Like, what? What? 
Why would you do that? You had a really cool villain. You had the potential for a really cool villain. And what do you do? Make him a bland character. Bland nothing character. Like, you know in the title sequence how for for all of this season it has been the character the episode has been about? How the fuck was this episode about Alicia in any way? Every single other episode has brought some kind of development for the characters they featured in the episode. What fucking development did it give to Alicia in this episode? Like, like seriously, I can't think of what lesson did Alicia learn in this episode. In the first episode, Morgan finally found himself. In the second episode, I guess you could say it was Strand. Uh, finally finding resolve to fight back and basically gain uh, the trust of uh, Virginia. In episode 3, uh, Althea uh, chose not to go with uh, her girlfriend. Uh, in episode 4, we had John struggling with his uh, morality and having to do bad stuff, you could say, and having to deal with the fact that uh, because he didn't try hard enough or whatever, uh, somebody died because he couldn't save her, like he felt guilty about not being able to save Janice. Uh, in episode 5, uh, it was the Dwight episode who got development and kind of reverted uh, to his savior days a little bit. So that was actually really cool. It's probably my favorite episode of the season, but I haven't really thought about it, so don't quote me on that. It might change in the future. Once the season is done is when I'm gonna decide which is my favorite episode. But so far, it's one of the most interesting ones. It's probably tied with the first episode for me. Although that, that episode works more as a Walking Dead episode than it does for Fear, but whatever. Um, uh, and episode 6 had development again for John, but it was mainly a Virginia and June episode, and but all of them got some kind of development or new information learned about him, you know? And what did this episode give us about Charlie or Althea or uh, Alicia? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. I'm so annoyed that the character that is the only character that is here since the first episode of the show got the worst episode of the season. It's so annoying. She was so much better in the Strand episode, honestly. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I don't really even feel like recapping this middle part of the episode with this fucking weird taxidermy guy. I think that's the word for it. I don't know, it's the first time I've heard it, so correct me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But I don't really give a shit about that character, I didn't really watch that part of the episode, I just skipped through it because I was so fucking bored. Uh, um, uh, then we're gonna go back from where he fucking dies. That is the moment where I actually started to pay attention again. Like the action scene uh, and fight between uh, Alicia and him was actually kind of interesting to see. Uh, uh, then he dies in a stupid way, we get a bunch of cool walker designs and it honestly feels like they came up with these cool walker designs and just created a shitty story around it. Like I can definitely see myself doing something like that if I was writing a comic and not a uh, novel because for me I can't really do visual stuff, I have to do mostly dialogue in my story. So it doesn't really work for me, but if I was doing a comic or a game or a show, I definitely would do something similar, but they didn't really develop the character. The, at the very least, they could have made this guy a creep, some kind of scary antagonist. And then it, they make, make him the most, the blandest fucking human being possible. He was so fucking boring, I couldn't even pay attention. I don't want to say anything bad about the actor because I don't really think he did bad, but I was so fucking bored. So yeah, we go get back up uh, from the point where uh, the walkers eat him, so uh, the characters that are there, AK, Alicia, Dakota and uh, Charlie start killing the walkers and trying to get out. And then Morgan shows up out of fucking nowhere, which is part for the course for this season, I don't really mind that, it's fine. 
and I actually really like the reuniting of Alicia and Morgan. It was a surprisingly emotional scene, although it does feel a little weird because I just still cannot accept uh, those two characters as being like close or feeling like family or being in one group in general. Morgan just... <coughs> 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 feels like the walking dead like i just still cannot shake off the walking dead feel off of him and uh, alicia still feels like the fear of the walking dead i just cannot gel that these two characters are in the same show air and are in the same group right now you know so it has a weird feeling seeing them reuniting but it was also kind of a nice emotional moment surprisingly emotional as i said so, uh, from what I remember, in the following scene, uh, uh, they are to um, Alicia and Morgan are talking about what they're gonna do with Dakota because, uh, surprise, surprise, it was actually Morgan who attacked the convoy earlier and tried to kidnap Dakota because he wants to use her to get all, uh, all their people out of Virginia's community. Which is actually a pretty interesting and dark turn for Morgan. It's not something I expected him to do. Uh, I actually, I think it would have made more sense for Dwight to be the one to do it, but I guess after the development he got in the fifth episode, it doesn't make too much sense. Uh, it wouldn't fit with his character development, but with the tactics of it, it does make sense because there was a cut tree on the road, which is a Negan tactic, or should I say savior tactic. So I wouldn't be surprised if Dwight helped him, but it, it did surprise me that it was actually him who did it. I thought it, uh, it was the end is the beginning uh, group, but it wasn't. So yeah, he is planning to use the card to get all the people out, but Alicia tries to argue with him that that's wrong because why should they uh, push the code be against them when they could have her as an ally. Although, when you think about it, uh, in what way is Dakota being their ally is gonna help them, you know? Yes, it's gonna be good for her, but she's not really gonna be helpful in getting all the people out of the communities. So, there was actually, that was actually a really cool argument between them and bordering on even escalating into a fight, which I was uh, curious to see whether they were going to be bold enough to do it and how it would end. Because basically you could say Morgan and Alicia are or at least should be the main characters of the show. But they're not. Or at least Alicia is not, surprisingly. Because it took like 7 episodes to get to her episode. Which should have been like episode 2 or episode 3. But I guess we did get her in episode 2 so it's not too bad. But yeah, there's actually a pretty cool argument uh, between them. Alicia wanting to help Dakota and protect her while Morgan uh, wanting to use her. And even Morgan threatening Alicia that if she and uh, Charlie and Dakota get out of the door, he will have to harm them possibly, which is not something he wants to do. But it was kind of a, a little bit, very little bit annoying that he quickly gave up on that. Uh, after like uh, Alicia threatened to just do it and that she wasn't just going to back down he, it's just a little I don't know for all this talk of him being changed there have been some moments uh, where I felt the old Morgan back even though it might not necessarily be intended to be the old Morgan it just reminded me of him like uh, the more I've thought about it, that scene from episode 5 where he uh, castizes Dwight for interrogating that uh, uh, that guy from the from the MRAP uh, in a bad way, like he's uh, like in his savior days. Uh, it just doesn't really necessarily fit uh, fit uh, with. Uh, Morgan's character since he's changed in the first episode. I don't know, maybe it's just the fact 
that in the first episode he had a new beard to signify his change and now he doesn't have it so I feel like he's regressing into it but I just feel like he felt like a new man and a new character when he still had his beard I wish they didn't really remove that beard I, I think it was a fake beard that they used and I know that it was annoying for Lenny James to have it which is why they didn't keep it for long but I honestly wish they kept it it would have been a cool way to change the character's look as well because sure he now has different clothes but I don't know it's just not enough for me at the very least should have kept his hair longer or whatever yeah it was a little bit of a pussy move for Morgan to give up so quickly but it was cool uh, at the end I like that he actually decided to protect her as well and maybe figure some other way out to get them, uh, their friends out of Virginia's communities. And then in the next scene, Strand shows up out of nowhere. I guess in this show people just show up out of nowhere, walkie talkies have like 100 miles range. I've just accepted that as a thing, like it doesn't bother me. At this point I want to enjoy the show, so stupid shit like this or just... Uh, inconsequential shit like this doesn't really bother me and it shouldn't really it's just a nitpick if you complain about that I would say um, so Strand shows up and he thanks Alicia for fighting Dakota and he believes that she is actually going to return her to him but then Morgan comes out of the shadows and reveals himself to be alive to, to Strand um, and then uh, Strand uh, wants Dakota to go with him, but uh, Alicia uh, refuses uh, to allow that. And there's a little bit of a standoff between Alicia, Strand and Morgan. It was actually a really cool standoff. And I just don't understand why at that point Strand doesn't just go with them. Like what is stopping him? He doesn't really care for other people that much, so why would he not do that? Like, let's say that, think with the thought that he is trying to cause damage from the inside. Why would he risk being killed or hunted in any way by Virginia instead of just running away with Alicia and Morgan right now? Why wouldn't he do that? I guess. The episode kind of implies, or pretty much says, that he thinks that it would be the safer way to continue playing Virginia uh, until a better moment to strike, or a safer moment to strike, and a better way to depose her. But why would he risk that? Like, why would he care about other people dying? He can just run away and save his own ass. I feel like that's a little bit... Uh, too different from his character because for me Strand is a inherently selfish character but it's not the kind of character who is a master manipulator who uh, would manipulate shit like that you know I think he uh, would manipulate to save his ass but not uh, like what Eugene did on the main show he's not gonna play the long game he's gonna play it for as long as he can uh, get his ass out, you know? But yeah, he refuses to go with them and they end up parting their ways. Alicia, Morgan, Dakota and Charlie go into Morgan's place and Strand going back to Virginia who chastises him and questions him whose side he is on because he wasn't able to bring back um, uh, Dakota. So then Strand tells her that he is on her side so she takes him to a secret hideout in the community where surprise surprise Grace is being held and she is very very pregnant uh, which I guess makes sense it's been like uh, 12 weeks or like 3-4 months since we last saw her because actually apparently each episode that we've seen uh, in this season so far has been a week apart even in, in universe time you know and that's a cliffhanger pretty much I, I guess it wasn't intended to be a cliffhanger but I guess it worked out as a cliffhanger but uh, yeah 
I don't really have much to say about that. What I want to quickly talk about though is the fact that everybody thought that Madison was going to come back in this episode. Even I honestly thought it was going to uh, she was going to be at least mentioned or teased in some way. Uh, like re reviewers uh, on certain websites and even I feel like AMC themselves were teasing it and were acting as there was going to be some kind of a mention. They were just annoyingly... Uh, they were apparently just annoyingly playing up the fact that the stadium from season 4 was mentioned. A thing that nobody who is a fan of the show from pre-season 4 gives a shit about. Because even though most fans who like season 1 to 3, I guess, agree at the very least that the first 8 episodes of season 4 aren't completely terrible, they still don't really give a shit about the stadium. So the way they played it up that it was going to be Madison, and they literally were tricking us. They knew they were tricking us that it was Madison. It's just fucking so dishonest. And they are doing it again. They're doing it again. But I'm not sure whether they're doing it for the um, actual mid-season finale, episode 8, or whether they're playing it up for the second half, because I doubt she's gonna show up in episode 8, maybe teased, but again, it's very unlikely. I thought they were going to do it for this episode, but they didn't. So they're probably not gonna do it for episode 8 either. If she shows up, it's probably gonna be at the finale of this season. Or most likely in the next season, because they actually um, uh, confirmed that uh, season 7 is happening. Which is cool, uh, as long as the quality continues to be that of season 6 or even better. I don't want a regression in the quality, I cannot take that. And please don't have other bad episodes like this one, because I hate this one. And as I said, it it was so boring and so annoying that it made me question whether the last six episodes before that were actually good. And it definitely made me look at them with a little bit of a... little bit more of a... how to say it... Uh, stricter eye like I'm now thinking about those episodes I'm definitely much more annoyed by the small hiccups that they have so yeah I really hope there aren't uh, other bad episodes like this one because I was ex I was hoping or I was thinking there was going to be just like uh, the Walking Dead season 9 where the whole season was good even the episodes that were kind of filler they weren't bad they were just kind of eh okay um, but this episode was bad, and my rating for this episode is definitely going to reflect that, uh, because at the very least I'm going to give this episode like a 6.6 out of 10, but at most this episode is only like a 7.4 out of 10. Because like, the beginning and the end is good, it's just as good as the rest of the season, but those middle scenes with this stupid, annoying and bland taxidermy guy who's just like uh, uh, doing surgeries on walkers was boring and it bored me to death it was the most boring walking dead universe episode that i've watched in a while like even world beyond wasn't this boring <sighs> but yeah um, this is gonna be uh, for me for Feel the Walking Dead until they come back, which is probably going to be April or May 2021 uh, because we're going to be getting the Walking Dead 10C uh, when we usually get the second half of a season, which means that it's going to be about February. Um, and after that, we're probably gonna be getting uh, the rest of season six of Fear. Uh, then maybe we might get a uh, world beyond again and talking about world beyond i'm actually really excited to do the reviews for episodes 8 9 and 10 because i freaking love these episodes and uh just a quick uh, thing i i want to say like a quick overview of my thoughts of these episodes or the season in general it's just like a one sentence the second half of the season has been so much better than the first one the first one was really slow and meandering, not really knowing what it wanted to do. 
but the second half I feel like it was so much better. I wish the first half was as good as well. But yeah, you're gonna hear more about it in that video. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, leave a like, subscribe. Also check out the link to the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me there and to my Wattpad where I post my stories. Cause in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you end up enjoying this video or you simply enjoy my stories, you can also go over to Patreon where you can pledge support and help keep the channel going and help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. Uh, but still, if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. You can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!